Um, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman and Ranking Member Lofgren, and to all of the witnesses for being here today. Um, I will not go into intellectual property. I serve on the same committee with all of them. Um, as we all know, artificial intelligence permeates all areas of business, industry, the arts, and influences decisions that we make in our daily lives. In my district, North Carolina State University launched the AI Academy me in 2020 that will prepare up to 5,000 highly qualified AI professionals from across the nation through their workforce development program. The AI Academy is one of the Labor Department's current 28 public-private apprenticeship programs, and I look forward um, to hearing from you about that. I know we've talked a little bit about uh, community colleges, um, but my first question is about cybersecurity. I'm concerned that we're not ready for AI-enabled attacks. I mean, we're not even ready for the attacks that we have already. Um, and one of the best defenses against phishing emails is that they're often poorly drafted with misspellings. Um, but generative AI provides an easy solution for malicious actors. And so Dr. Matheny and Dr. Murdoch, and then anybody else, but I do have another question, so be quick. Um, are current cybersecurity standards and guidelines equipped to be able to handle AI-enabled cybersecurity and attacks, and what could the federal government do? Thank you for the question. Uh, we're not equipped yet, and I think that um, this has been, I know, a, a priority for DHS CISA uh, to take this on, um, and there's a lot of thoughtful work there uh, looking at the impact of AI on cybersecurity, including um, advances in spear phishing, which can be made more cost effective through the use of these language models, but also through the use of uh, these lang large language models to generate not human language, but computer code. Um, so these code generation tools can be used to create offensive cyber weapons. Um, and it's possible that in the future, those uh, cyber weapons could be quite capable and very cost effective and generated at scale, a scale that right now um, isn't possible even for state programs. So I think that's quite worrisome. Um, AI can also, though, enable stronger uh, cyber defenses. And so figuring out how to invest uh, in AI capabilities that will ultimately uh, create an asymmetric advantage for defense over offense is an important research priority. Okay, and um, Dr. Murdoch, could you be very brief? Because my next question's for you. <laughs> I, I think your sense of uh, this being an important priority is actually right because I think AI plus cybersecurity is probably one of the earliest spaces where we're going to see AI manifesting, and I'll just agree with uh, Jason otherwise. Um, good points. We need to work on this. Great. Thank you. Um, and Dr. Murdoch, to you, American leadership begins with a strong workforce, as we've discussed, um, one that d nurtures both domestic talent and attracts the best global minds. Many international students come here to conduct innovative research in emerging technologies, and a report from your organization revealed that two-thirds of graduate students in AI-related programs are international students. Um, and so, although they want to stay here, um, our immigration laws keep them from staying here. I've done a lot of work with the so-called documented dreamers who came here with their parents and then at 21 have to self-deport with all of the investment that we have made in their education. Um, so can you discuss better ways to not just attract, but retain this talent, particularly in the AI space? And then if there's time, anybody else? So um, I will give one uh, part of points. I think we've clearly, through our own surveys, seen that people want to stay in the U.S. It's one of our strongest strengths. Um, the U.S. Uh, attracting high quality talent is is the thing that has driven a lot of our innovation, and being able to pull from the world's best is really uh, key. So um, we see this from China, we see this from all countries, and I think we need to very much invest in this, continue to invest in it. I think a lot of the inhibitors are bureaucratic, uh, and I do think there's a, for our high-skilled talent base, we've seen China implement some really innovative, not China, Canada, uh, sorry, uh, Canada, yes. uh, inv invest in some really interesting ways of when someone comes to the uh, to Canada and they meet their, uh, they give everybody uh, in their family the opportunity to start working the same day that the person who was approved. 
that's pretty amazing, and it really can make a big decision when you're trying to decide whether to move to Canada or the U.S. or some other place. And so I think there's, those kind of innovations are strongly within the Congress, your hands, and I think you can use them very effectively. Thank you so much, and I yield back. Gentlewoman.